professionals and Dragon technicians to secure the capsule and get the crew out quickly and safely. And our fun f history fact for this return, this will be the first night splashdown of a U.S. crewed spacecraft since Apollo 8's pre-dawn return in the Pacific Ocean on December 27, 1968, with NASA astronauts Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders. So in the next phase of the mission, Dragon has a series of steps to complete before returning Mike, Victor, Shannon, and Soichi home. First, Dragon will maneuver to the correct uh, attitude um, and then uh, start to separate its claw, then the uh, jettison its trunk, which is the cylindrical, unpressurized part of the spacecraft. The trunk is currently connected to the aft or bottom section of the Dragon capsule, where the heat shield is located. So in order to expose the heat shield and get the vehicle ready for atmospheric reentry, we'll jettison the trunk. From there, the spacecraft will use its forward thrusters to perform a deorbit burn, which will put Dragon on a trajectory to return to Earth. The burn will last more than 16 minutes once it starts. And to prepare for these upcoming events, right now the Dragon capsule is doing a number of things autonomously. It's isolating the thermal control system fluid loops from the radiator. This system is what will help keep the internal temperature of Dragon uh, for, uh, for Mike, Victor, Shannon, and Suichi um, nice and cool during re-entry. A dragon is also initiating separation of the claw mechanism, which will terminate data, power, and fluid connections between the capsule and the trunk. And I'm receiving information that claw separation is currently occurring uh, right on time, and that was scheduled for 1057 Pacific, so uh, right on time for that claw separation. Coming up next will be trunk separation very shortly after. And I'm sure we will hear a call out to the crew shortly about our claw separation. Yeah, over the next hour, um, there's going to be a lot of events happening in order to get the Dragon spacecraft. Dragon SpaceX, we showed nominal trunk jettison. And SpaceX uh, from Resilience, we see the same. and. You could definitely feel the claw step as well as hear it, and the same for trunk jettison uh, was very obvious. And through the centerline cameras, you could definitely see a lot of the debris from the separation. Hey, thanks, Resilience, for that thorough report. We copy all. Cool. So there was some report outs from the crew about what they felt when the uh, claw had separated as well as the trunk as it was jettisoned. And we did get confirmation that both occurred nominally, meaning that telemetry is looking good. The nitrox system is primed for cabin and suit cooling and the heat shield is exposed ready for atmospheric re-entry. Up next, we have the final steps that Dragon will perform to, prior to re-entry, the slew or maneuver to deorbit burn attitude and the deep orbit burn itself. This is, again, the last time that the four Dracos, which are the four thrusters located at the top of the vehicle, uh, the last time that they will ignite. The due orbit burn will place Dragon on a precise trajectory to return to the splashdown zone off the coast of Panama City, Florida, and will last a yeah, bit more Dragon than 16 SpaceX minutes. Looks like we're uh, on to nominal comms for the rest of the mission at this point. That's good news. Uh, thanks for that update, Will. And good news indeed, as we were mentioning, we we're tracking some issues with one of the TDRS tracking data and relay satellite system uh, satellites that was preventing us from getting some communication from the vehicle at certain points in their orbit. However, uh, that seems to have cleared up. And next, we are looking for deorbit burn to begin in just about three minutes. As we mentioned, that should last almost uh, 16 and a half minutes. And that is the braking maneuver that's going to drop Dragon out of Earth orbit and bring them back into the atmosphere. So things are really speeding up with that nominal claw uh, separation and trunk jettison. And they reported some similar things that we heard from Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley mentioning that it was uh, something you could definitely feel jettisoning that trunk. Um, so very interesting and, uh, and, and good news that everything still continues to uh, 
to look well. And things look pretty good on Earth here, too. This is a view from the Go Navigator recovery ship. And off to the left, that is indeed a dolphin who is checking out the operations as Go Navigator begins to move into place uh, to recover crew to our crew dragon once they splash down tonight. So uh, beautiful things in space and on Earth. Yeah, it seems like we're not the only ones interested in the astronauts return. Uh, maybe uh, aside from pers uh, medical staff, they might get a greeting from some marine animals as well. That is a uh, very, very cool uh, picture of those dolphins. Um, again, just a few minutes away from the beginning of that 16 minute deorbit burn. Um, we just had trunk separation and a couple of things about the trunk separation. Earlier in the night, uh, we uh, formed a prop wasting burn to get rid of um, unneeded propellants. We shed about 80 to 90 kilograms worth of propellant and uh, to, to lighten the load that Dragon will um, uh, be experiencing uh, when it comes back to Earth. And this is an incredible shot right now we have of the separation. Uh, that is Crew Dragon and its trunk now separate, flying free. Uh, and we are just moments away from hearing the beginning of the deorbit burn. Uh, and as, as I was talking, the, um, the, the trunk itself and as well as the propellant used in this deorbit burn, once all is said and done, we'll be shedding about 6,000 pounds of mass from the Dragon spacecraft. So starting off at around 27,000 pounds, all going down to about 21,000 pounds. So those help to, again, lessen the load that the parachutes will have to um, uh, uh, sort of carry when they deploy and eventually slow down the spacecraft. This is just absolutely an incredible view, and this is coming to us from the International Space Station. So they do still have a little bit of an eye on Dragon. Uh, once Crew Dragon begins that re-entry period following the deorbit burn completion, we uh, hope to have infrared imagery thanks to the WV-57 aircraft uh, that has departed from Ellington and is in the proper location, and they have thermal imagery uh, systems aboard, and fingers crossed, we get some visuals of Crew Dragon re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. And right on time, we also have the start of the deorbit burn. As we mentioned, this should last 16 minutes, 26 seconds. So this has fully committed uh, Crew Dragon to coming home. So just within the last 10 minutes, Crew Dragon jettisoned its trunk and initiated this deorbit burn just a minute ago. And like we mentioned earlier, this deorbit burn is the last time those four forward Draco thrusters will fire. Uh, Dragon Resil Resilience has not yet entered the Earth's atmosphere. This deorbit burn is what will line the vehicle up and put it uh, on a final trajectory to the landing site in the Gulf of Mexico, just off the coast of Panama City, Florida. Uh, there is a beautiful shot of the crew inside. That is Commander Mike Hopkins, uh, closest, closest to your screen, and next to him is... Um, Victor Glover, the pilot. And on the screens, that, those are the thrusters firing. Uh, as we mentioned, we are in the midst of the deorbit burn right now, and they are monitoring. So this is a, an amazing opportunity to get to see the inside of the cabin at this point. We just had that view from the International Space Station of Crew Dragon in the trunk having recently separated. And this is uh, these are the four crew members who are currently inside, and they are committed to coming home. They're using the screens to keep tabs on the burn duration, uh, the Draco thrusters firing, and trajectory details like entry angle, capsule perigee, and how much distance remaining until deorbit burn termination. Uh, Dragon is flying itself, so all the crew has to do is stay strapped in their seats uh, and enjoy the flight. Uh, and they're just keeping tabs on things using those uh, touchscreen display monitors. So it's been about two minutes since the burn began. We are in the entry, descent, and landing phase of the mission. This is the uh, largest burn of the evening. And as we mentioned, this really commits us to splashing down uh, specifically at that Panama City uh, location just off the coast. And we were monitoring weather uh, all the way until the point of um, deorbit burn because, uh, you know, it, 
in the event that weather shifted or we needed to potentially target a different site, uh, this deorbit burn wouldn't have begun. But now, um, like Leah mentioned, we are committed and we'll be um, uh, looking forward to the splashdown of not only the capsule but the crew members as well. And that deorbit burn should end at 11.19 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, following that, we will close the nose cone a few minutes later. The nose cone is open right now because, as you can see in those uh, screens, those four thrusters firing are the four bulkhead thrusters, and they are located underneath the nose cone. So we leave the nose cone open right now uh, for the 16-and-a-half-minute burn, and we will close it once that is complete. Three and a half minutes into the burn, continuing to monitor the data and continuing to get these great views from inside the cabin. We won't keep these views for the entire return home. As we mentioned, once Crew Dragon really begins its entry into the Earth's atmosphere, we anticipate a loss of signal for about seven minutes where we won't be able to receive uh, telemetry or data or video or audio from the Crew Dragon vehicle. However, Crew Dragon is entirely autonomous, flying itself, uh, knows exactly what it needs and where it needs to go. And so hopefully at that point, the astronauts are just monitoring as well. Uh, and the really reason for that comms blackout is because plasma builds up on the outside of the capsule due to the, uh, the speed at which the vehicle is re-entering the Earth's atmosphere and building up that heat to around 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit outside the capsule. So a very, very cool view right now. On the left, you've got from the International Space Station, Crew Dragon and its trunk. And on the right-hand side, the four astronauts who are inside uh, that small white dot preparing to return to Earth. Yeah, the distance from the uh, trunk and distance between the trunk and um the Crew Dragon vehicle is continuing to get larger and larger, and the deep orbit burn um, does effectively what his name says. Um, we're taking the vehicle out of orbit and lowering its uh, altitude uh, until eventually, um, you know, we make its way back to Earth. We're now five minutes into the deorbit burn, about 11 minutes left. Crew still monitoring and teams here in Mission Control Hawthorne still monitoring as well. This crew has been in space for about six months. Their journey started on November 15th of last year, and now really they're on their last section before they can return back to Earth um, and get that fresh air that we all love. Now that the deorbit burn has started, we really are less than an hour away from splashing down. We are expecting splashdown to occur at 11.57 p.m. Pacific time, 6.57 GMT, so really less than 50, 50 minutes away. As we mentioned here on the Earth side of things, uh, everyone is in place on the GO Navigator vessel that needs to be there when the crew arrives. Two fast boats will approach the vehicle and ensure there are no toxic vapors from those hypergolic fumes that may be present after splashing down. They will also uh, begin rigging the vehicle and prepare it for to be hoisted into the nest on GO Navigator. 
But ahead of all of that, we also have the WB-57 aircraft from Ellington Field in Houston, Texas, that is uh, in position, and we will be awaiting views from the aircraft once uh, Crew Dragon begins its reentry into Earth's atmosphere. There's a thermal imaging camera on the aircraft that we hope to uh, get some, some views from. And at the bottom of those touch screen displays, you'll notice some buttons, uh, really important functions like uh, shoot deploy or cutting the main shoots. Um, these have dedicated buttons for them. Um, otherwise, the team can you know, use a number of views to monitor the mission um, as they're doing right now. Uh, hypergolic fuels or hypergolic propellants are, are pretty common for uh, space propellants. Um, they are, one of their properties is they don't require an ignition source. So once uh, two components are combined, typically a fuel and oxidizer, they will ignite um, just by uh, being in contact with one another. And it is great for, you know, uh, use in space, but you know, one of the downsides is uh, they can be uh, pretty toxic um, uh, to humans. So that's why it's super important that when the spacecraft does land, uh, the first fast boat, the first thing, one of the first things they do is uh, perform a sniff test to make sure that none of that toxic vapor is still in the vicinity. So that way the other personnel can approach and um, continue with the rest of the recovery operations. We're coming up on nine and a half minutes into this 16 and a half minute maneuver. So approximately seven minutes left and everything is looking good. Crews still monitoring those thrusters in the screens on their displays. And this is the final burn of the day. Crew Dragon, as we said, is now committed to splashing down off the coast of Panama City, Florida tonight. And a reminder of the astronauts that are coming home today, their closest to the screen is Mike Hopkins. He's the commander, and to his right is Victor Glover, the pilot. To Victor Glover's right is Shannon Walker. And to Mike Hawkins' left, we have Soichi Noguchi, an astronaut with the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. Close to your screen is Crew Dragon Commander Mike Hopkins. Um, a little bit about him. He was born in Lebanon, Missouri, but uh, grew up outside of Rich, Richland, Missouri. He was selected as an astronaut by NASA in 2009. Hops, Hopkins is a colonel in the United States Air Force and holds degrees in aerospace engineering. Uh, he also flew on the Russian Soyuz as a member of the Expedition 38 and 37 and 38 crew logging um, at the time 166 days in space. He performed two spacewalks totaling almost 13 hours uh, ch to change out a degraded pump module on the space station. Uh, he also has military experience, including testing the C-17 and C-130 aircraft. And those two spacewalks were from uh, his previous mission. He added to those while he was on the International Space Station during this flight, added a couple more actually. Uh, and the deorbit burn, we are just about four and a half minutes away from that being complete. Things are still looking good. And as a reminder, this is a braking maneuver. So Crew Dragon is firing those thrusters into the same direction that it was traveling. Uh, this should slow Crew Dragon down enough to drop it out of orbit.
So we are waiting on the deorbit burn to end, and that should happen at approximately 11.19 p.m. Pacific time, just a few minutes from now. The astronauts on board are continuing to monitor the uh, burns of the four forward um, bulkhead thrusters. Things have really picked up in the last 15 minutes or so. Uh, the crew, we had claw separation from the trunk and the uh, capsule itself. The claw connecting those thermal control or the thermal and avionics and uh, data and telemetry information between the crew capsule and the trunk. And we had trunk jettison and some amazing shots there for a moment from the International Space Station of both the trunk and crew dragon flying separately of one another. And now we are in this deorbit burn, now 14 minutes in, meaning we only have about two and a half minutes left on this deorbit burn, committing them to coming home to Panama City or off the coast of Panama City, Florida. And we are looking at splashdown at about uh, 11.57 p.m. Pacific time. So 40 minutes from now, we will have these crew one astronauts back on planet Earth. And since that um, claw separation and jettison of the trunk. The Dragon spacecraft is running on internal battery power. So everything that you see on screen uh, is powered by uh, batteries on the capsule itself and it's no longer drawing power from the trunk. And as you can see, the astronauts still have their visors up on their suits. Um, that is fine for right now and they will need to lower those visors once it comes time for the re-entry of the capsule into the atmosphere. So this deorbit burn is not the re-entry itself. We don't have those extreme temperatures building up on the outside of the vehicle right now. That's why we still have telemetry and communications with the spacecraft. But once we begin that re-entry, they will close their visors. We're still tracking this deorbit burn, getting reports that the flight path angle is valid Everything looking nominal for this burn. And we should have about one minute left. And this deorbit burn is a braking maneuver. Um, after this, we're sort of done with um, any major burns. Uh, the majority of speed reduction will be done by the atmosphere of the Earth. Uh, and then after that, the parachutes that will deploy on the Dragon spacecraft. So um, again, uh, just a few seconds away from completing this you know, long duration, 16 minute burn. Uh, and then uh, we'll um, be entering the Earth's atmosphere uh, very shortly after that. And we are seconds away from that call out. As you saw, we lost video with the crew. Uh, that was one of those tracked loss of signals. Dragon SpaceX, we show the orbit burn is complete with nominal performance. Nose cone closure initiated. And SpaceX from Resilience, uh, we copy all. That's great news. And we're following the nose cone closure. Uh, and that is great news. The deorbit burn completed successfully. And now we're moving on to nose cone closure. In the background right now, Dragon is currently inhibiting those forward bulkhead thrusters that we just used to complete the deorbit burn, ensuring it's safe to latch the nose cone shut for re-entry. Also, the vehicle has initiated the Nitrox suit purge. This will help keep Mike, Victor, Shannon, and Soichi cool and comfortable during the re-entry, which is coming up in about 20 minutes. And at this point, the nose cone is closing and protecting the forward hatch for re-entry. Again, the, our astronauts are using their screens to monitor the locking of the nose cone, which is done by a set of hooks. 
so we are standing by for confirmation of nose cone closure. We needed to wait until this point because we were using those forward bulkhead Draco thrusters underneath the nose cone to complete that deorbit burn. Uh, we did hear nominal deorbit burn, so things continue to move very smoothly for Crew Dragon Resilience on its way home from the International Space Station. So uh, anticipated nose cone closure should come in about one minute. So this view here is uh, Mission Control in Hawthorne in uh, California. I have a whole team of uh, folks supporting uh, the astronauts return. Um, we are expecting a planned communication blackout period um, at 11.43 p.m. Pacific time. Again, that is when we have a ton of plasma buildup at the bottom of the capsule. It's going to start to interfere with some of the communications, uh, but that is planned and uh, should last for about seven and a half minutes at that time. Um, the Dragon spacecraft will continue to steer and pilot itself uh, towards the targeted landing site of, off the coast of Panama City until we get those communications back and once again can talk to the astronauts. And we just heard a call that nose cone closure is about 50% complete. So that continues and we are tracking for that to be complete momentarily. That nose cone protects the forward hatch that the astronauts use to ingress or enter and egress or exit the International Space Station. Uh, and so it's important that we are able to protect that area for potential future reuse of this capsule. So we are standing by for confirmation that nose, the nose cone has fully closed. Uh, the next major milestone we'll be looking for is the entry of the vehicle and, and that anticipated loss of signal with the spacecraft. Uh, entry of the vehicle should begin around 11.45, so about 23 minutes from now. And um, we will be tracking the vehicle its entire way back, even though we don't necessarily have telemetry with it. And as those vehicles, uh, the vehicle starts to make its way back to Earth, the astronauts on board should experience um, a max a peak of three to five Gs, um, similar to what they would experience on ascent with the Falcon 9. Um, and then the drogue chutes will deploy and the uh, main chutes will also deploy after that. And then we can start to begin recovery operations in this nighttime splashdown. We are standing by for information about the nose cone closure. And the nose cone is closed. The uh, forward hatch now being protected and those four forward bulkhead Draco thrusters underneath. As we begin the second half of entry, Dragon is now beginning to flush Nitrox into the cabin and continuing to top off Mike, Victor, Shannon, and Soichi's suit with cold air. Again, this is what will allow the cabin temperature to remain comfortable while external temperatures reach over 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. The heat shield is pointing forward um, the bottom, uh, so to speak, of the capsule, leading the capsule into the landing site. And the suits themselves can detect uh, if they start to get too warm and will automatically start drawing in that nitrox again to keep the astronauts nice and cool uh, all the way down until splashdown. So we have some time until that next major milestone as we discussed uh, with the nose cone closed, we'll be looking for that loss of signal. That could come as early as uh, 1143 with our re-entry into Earth's atmosphere at about 1145, so 20 minutes from now. Uh, Mike, Victor, Shannon, and Soichi, as we've noticed, they are monitoring the actions throughout this uh, this procedure, and they should be able to continue to do so throughout the splashdown of Crew Dragon. Uh, they, they shouldn't have to take any action. Dragon is a fully autonomous vehicle, and so it can fly itself. Uh, the crew can step in if necessary and command some movements of the vehicle and, and some other actions, but um, Things have moved very smoothly throughout the day so far, so we are looking at an on-time splashdown at 11.57 p.m. GM, or 11.57 p.m. Pacific time off the coast of Panama City, Florida, and hopefully along the way the astronauts will simply be able to monitor. 
and we did get a weather report um, just a few minutes ago, and weather continues to look great, uh, excellent, if I may say. Uh, wind speeds are very low, and the height of the waves are also very low. There's no uh, rain in the area, so really ideal conditions for splashdown and recovery of the crew. Um, once they splash down, there are a couple of boats that will um, step in uh, to make sure that the area is safe. Uh, they'll collect the chutes, and then there is a larger recovery vessel, um, the same vessel that sort of took the picture of the dolphin earlier, uh, that will come up and scoop Dragon out of the water, hoist it using a crane on the back of the boat um, onto the deck, and then uh, we have a couple of checkout procedures to get through before we open up the hatch, and uh, medical staff can start to attend and evaluate how the astronauts are doing um, uh, before they, you know, eventually get into the helicopter and start to make their way back uh, towards land. And uh, we, as we've mentioned, we were initially looking at returning these astronauts on the Wednesday the 28th, having them undock from the International Space Station. And then we looked at Friday, uh, April 30th, so just yesterday, uh, and we were really waiting on perfect weather conditions, which is what we're seeing tonight. And so just a little bit more about exactly what that means and, and what those parameters are like for us when we're considering splashdown locations. We want the wind to be no greater than 10 and a half knots, uh, which is about 17 and 0.7 feet per second. And the latest report that we have, the wind is around two knots, so very much within that range. Uh, we'll need no lightning within, or no Less than 10 miles away, or no more. Dragon SpaceX, we show nose cone secure for entry. And SpaceX from resilience, we see the same. And good news being relayed to the Crew Dragon crew. That nose cone is closed. Uh, but a little bit more about that recovery criteria. We were talking about lightning. Uh, we don't want that within the 10-mile radius and uh, away or within the vehicle area, as well as no more than 25% chance of rain. Um, we don't want any clouds lower than a 500 feet, which means that the cloud ceiling, we don't want that any lower than 500 feet. Um, and we need at least a mile of visibility for a night splashdown. So everything is really lining up perfectly for splashdown tonight. And we are, we are continuing to watch Crew Dragon execute all of the pre-programmed maneuvers. Uh, the next major one now with the nose cone secured and all of those hooks secured. Uh, we'll be looking for really re-entry. And once the Dragon uh, spacecraft uh, splashes down, we're, we typically try to target about an hour before we can, you know, get in there, recover the vessel, and open up that hatch. Um, but it'll depend. It'll depend on, you know, um, if there's any hypergolic uh, vapors in the air, how fast the boats can get to the uh, capsule. But, um, you know, certainly expediency is uh, of the utmo utmost uh, urgency for us. So, um, you know, the, the recovery team will certainly try their best to make sure the astronauts are in good, uh, safe hands and on the boat and eventually the helicopter as soon as uh, we can do so safely. Yeah, and, and we hope to see the crew egress or exit Dragon within an hour after splashing down, uh, which is really an impressive timeline. And so um, as soon as splashdown occurs, those two fast boats will begin uh, proceeding toward the vehicle. They'll be sniffing for those hypergolic fuels. Uh, we don't want any of those toxic fumes within the vicinity of the capsule. And we will have one person uh, go onto the capsule and begin to rig it or prepare it to be lifted out of the water. And once the recovery ship backs up to the vehicle, um, they can connect that to the ship and lift it onto the ship. So, and that all can happen within about a 30 minute time frame. Um, and uh, it's, things are really moving quickly now with the, the start of entry, descent and landing, a lot of milestones happening. So we hope that you'll stay tuned with us for all of those. The Dragon spacecraft itself is, uh, now that it's completed its deorbit burn, its altitude is starting to decrease and decrease and decrease, where eventually it'll start to meet the Earth's atmosphere. Um, and once it does, uh, it's moving 
Uh, it was moving at over 17,500 miles an hour. And so we'll start to eventually slow it down all the way to 16 miles an hour. And that's generally the, the rate at which, um, the speed at which it will um, splash down uh, in the ocean. So uh, much, uh, much softer than if it were to uh, hit the water at 17,500 miles an hour. Now, if you look closely in this picture, that is still Crew Dragon, that view from the International Space Station. As we mentioned, Crew Dragon has just completed its deorbit burn, but that doesn't mean that it's out of space yet. So Crew Dragon is still in a uh, microgravity environment and, and continues to slow and drop into Earth's atmosphere. That's when our reentry period will really begin, uh, when we expect to also have that loss of communications Andy was just discussing. But right now, still very exciting to be able to have this view from the International Space Station of Crew Dragon, which just departed that command being sent six hours ago for those hooks to open on the nose cone uh, and those two short bursts to separate it from the International Space Station. So a lot can happen in six hours as we've seen. And a lot can also happen in 30 minutes because in that amount of time, uh, Crew Dragon will be back on Earth. And those uh, sort of quick movements, that is not Crew Dragon, there it is. Uh, that is not Crew Dragon moving in space. That is uh, the camera repositioning itself. So uh, Crew Dragon right now is really on a controlled, um, sort of slow descent uh, back towards Earth. Um, but it is uh, quite cool that uh, the International Space Station can still and has been tracking Crew Dragon all the way since it separated earlier on today. And taking a look at what the crew aboard the International Space Station is doing. Uh, some of them are actually in their sleep period. So they may be asleep right now. And they, they also may be, uh, who knows, up in the middle of the night. And I'm sure some of them are very eager to uh, make sure that they're, um, you know. Uh, Dragon SpaceX for entry brief. And go for entry brief. Everything continues to look awesome. So no updates to timing, no updates for systems. Weather is uh, winds at three knots. Wave height remains less than one foot. Uh, wave period still at five seconds. Recovery team reports in position, ready to support. Okay, no changes to timeline. Everything is looking good. Uh, three knots on the wind. Less than a foot in five seconds on the period. We're currently showing 220, and we're working through our entry brief, and we'll give you a, uh, a go here momentarily. Okay, SpaceX copies. Thank you. You know, as the folks on the crew capsule itself, when your core calls you and says everything continues to look awesome, uh, that is probably the greatest of great news as the capsule is gearing up for re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere and eventual splashdown here uh, within the hour. Um, as I was mentioning earlier, the crew on the International Space Station, they might be up right now. I'm sure they're very eager to see that, um, see um, uh, to make sure that their fellow crew members uh, are safely back home on Earth. So, uh, you know, they might be tuning in to make sure that you know, everything goes smoothly before they, you know, head off to bed. And uh, meanwhile, on Earth, this is the view that we had earlier from Go Navigator, the recovery vessel that we'll see lift Crew Dragon out of the water later on. They had another visitor. Uh, you know, outer space is a pretty amazing place to explore, and I think the ocean is as well. And so this is one of the local residents in the area of Go Navigator at the time. Go Navigator has now moved closer to the location of Splashdown, and they will then move in once the vehicle has uh, made contact with the water to then retrieve it. Yeah, maybe that's a uh, foreshadowing of the future zero-g indicator. We haven't had a marine <laughs> animal uh, find space yet, so maybe the next one will be a dolphin. That's not a bad idea. Uh, this view right, this view right now is uh, again from the Inter International Space Station. That white dot in the center of your screen is the Dragon capsule, the, um, and the crew is inside there and uh, we're continuing to adjust the cameras uh, but it continues to make its way back towards earth 
And those cameras can be adjusted by teams on the ground in Mission Control Houston. So as you mentioned, the, the astronauts still on the International Space Station have the opportunity be, to be getting some sleep now. They very well might be watching the coverage and we uh, thank them as well for tuning in. But um, but yes, just an amazing view for for us to get to see this image of Crew Dragon still in space, counting down to that uh, beginning of re-entry. It all happens very fast once that begins. And we are looking for re-entry to begin at uh, 11.45, so less than 10 minutes from now. And SpaceX from Resilience, tablets are secured on the satchels, restraints are tightened, and visors are down. SpaceX copies on tablets, restraints, and visors. Thank you. The crew reporting to the core here that uh, they are in the proper configuration for their deorbit, uh, their, their reentry essentially. So their visors on their suits are now down and locked in place. We saw them earlier during that deorbit burn. The visors were still up uh, and, and they needed to be closed prior to the reentry. And so it sounds like everything is properly secured and stowed for that reentry into Earth's atmosphere. As we mentioned, we can expect the astronauts to feel about anywhere between three and five Gs upon their reentry. All right, we are under 20 minutes away from splashdown. Here's uh, the rundown again of what to expect here in a, in a in the next 20 minutes. At 11.43 p.m. Pacific time, we're gonna enter that communications blackout period that will last for approximately seven and a half minutes. Um, at 11.45 p.m., uh, entry will begin. That is where the capsule will uh, enter the Earth's atmosphere. 11.52 p.m., the drogue chutes will deploy. And then less than a minute after that, um, the main chutes will deploy, slowing the Dragon spacecraft down to 16 miles an hour. And then at 11.57 p.m. Pacific time, we have splashdown of the Crew-1 Resilience capsule. Dragon SpaceX, we show five minutes until predicted calm blackout. We will see you on the other side at 0650. And SpaceX Resilience copies, we'll talk to you on the other side. And there was that um, uh, blackout period uh, that I had mentioned earlier, that is the core. Uh, just confirming again the time um, and uh, the expectation that there will be a blackout period at approximately 11.43 p.m. Pacific time for seven and a half minutes. Again, the Dragon vehicle is autonomous and uh, really steering itself uh, at this point. So uh, even though communications can't be sent back and forth between Dragon and ground, uh, the vehicle is uh, really uh, you know, doing its own thing and making sure that uh, it reaches the targeted landing site as intended. We are four minutes away from that predicted loss of signal. Uh, and this is something that occurs whenever we bring home crewed spacecraft, whether it be a Crew Dragon or a Soyuz spacecraft, their, their re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere looks very similar. Uh, they both have a deorbit burn and they both slow down significantly upon re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. And that plasma buildup outside of the vehicle, uh, along with that heat, that prevents us from having communications with the vehicle for several minutes. This time we're looking at about seven minutes. So uh, it's something that we're very uh, aware of and experienced with. And something else we are just learning is Crew Dragon is about 140 kilometers in altitude. So we continue to uh, track its journey back to Earth. We are now what it looks like three minutes away from that anticipated LOS. So yeah, Leah and I will continue to be with you live, not just uh, until splashdown, but afterwards as part of the recovery operations as well. Uh, we'll wanna make sure that the team um, is uh, picked up out of the water and uh, safe and sound on the um, Go Navigator boat uh, before we sign off. So uh, we still got a bit of time here, um, but we do have quite a bit of events coming up in the next hour and a half. 
um, uh, until the crew is uh, you know safely back on Earth. And speaking of recovery, that uh, that leads into an ask or a Launch America question that we have. Do any medical checkups happen after the return of Crew-1 back on Earth? Uh, yes, that's actually the first thing that happens once Crew-1 returns and is hoisted onto the ship. The first person inside the hatch will be a medical doctor that speaks with the crew and allows them to, uh, to let them know how they're feeling ahead of egress or being taken out of the vehicle. And as soon as that happens, they'll be moved in for some further medical checks ahead of being flown back on a helicopter to shore in Florida. So um, that'll be the, the first thing that happens. Safety of our crew and their health is our priority. Yeah, and, and you know, part of landing selection slides, uh, one of the um, criteria is we have to be close to medical facilities. So, you know, everything is really planned around the safety, uh, the safety uh, of the astronauts and make sure that they come back, uh, you know, nice and healthy uh, because they've had, you know, such um, uh, uh, rigorous sort of time up in space, you know, being in microgravity and now returning back to Earth and having to deal with the gravity uh, down here. And so, uh, like Leah mentioned, um, you know, medical staff will be one of the first people that speak to the astronauts as soon as they uh, land here on Earth. We just heard that Dragon is an entry attitude, uh, exactly where they need to be. And uh, for this targeted splash down off the coast of Panama City, Florida, we have that loss of signal that we predict to occur coming up in about one minute. And we expect to see that last for about seven minutes. Hearing our altitude is approximately 108 kilometers above Earth. And as a reminder, our four crew members, Mike Hopkins, Victor Glover, Shannon Walker, and Suichi Noguchi, all on board Crew Dragon, returning home today. They are monitoring this process, and so they uh, are well aware that we may lose communications with them as soon as within 30 seconds, um, and we will speak with them once we are out of that comms blackout period, again, lasting about seven minutes today. We're standing by for that LOS, under 100 kilometers in altitude. And shortly after we begin that uh, communications blackout period, 11.45 p.m. Pacific time, uh, that is when the spacecraft will enter the Earth's atmosphere and begin, you know, sort of its final descent uh, back uh, to a splashdown. Altitude of Crew Dragon now at 90 kilometers. And this view on the right-hand side of your screen and Mission Control Hawthorne here in California, teams monitoring the vehicle. Uh, and during this loss of signal point, uh, this communications blackout, they, they won't be able to get telemetry on the vehicle, but Crew Dragon is totally autonomous. So at this point, we are entering that communications blackout period. Uh, this will last approximately seven and a half minutes due to plasma formation around the spacecraft. During this time, no vehicle telemetry is received by mission control or the recovery team, and no external commanding of the vehicle or voice communication is possible. And just as a reminder, Dragon is designed to fly itself and continues to autonomously use Draco thrusters to orient itself during re-entry. Uh, during re-entry, the vehicle will be slowing down from orbital velocity, which is approximately 17,500 17, miles per hour. And the top temperature around Dragon, uh, that Dragon will experience upon re-entry is about 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. 
And of course, inside the capsule it will not get near that hot. We expect the temperature to raise to about 85 degrees. And the astronauts have cool air inside the vehicle as well as inside their suits. Uh, and so we have just entered the time of entry interface. So the Dragon is now experiencing uh, the Earth's atmosphere for the first time in almost six months. So we are continuing to uh, be in this LOS period. As we mentioned, it should last about seven minutes and that began at 11.43 p.m. Pacific time. So we have about four minutes left of that LOS period uh, and the crew knows that we will be in communication with them on the other side. And this has uh, got to be the, the period where uh, if you followed Bob and Doug's re-entry, they had described Dragon as sort of coming back to life when it re-entered the atmosphere. So uh, again, uh, those temperatures are caused by friction. So, um, you know, the the spacecraft itself is moving at such a high rate of speed that it's, it's hitting all these air particles. And so um, it's got to be, um, you know, the vibration levels and uh, the sound have got to be uh, sort of elevated at this point as it continues to go through the Earth's atmosphere. Yeah, and as we mentioned, this is the first time that the vehicles felt this lift and this drag since launch. Um, the atmosphere in space that doesn't exist, and so it's a vacuum and, and uh, haven't been feeling this and, and been able to hear those sounds that uh, you were discussing. So. Um, it's quite a different moment after having six months in microgravity. They will begin to start feeling some Gs, as we mentioned, between three and five Gs upon their re-entry. And uh, we are standing by, it's been about four minutes now since that loss of signal began. That's an estimated seven minutes. The plasma is building up on the outside of the capsule as it continues entering the Earth's atmosphere. The temperatures around the capsule building up to 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. And this view from our WB-57 aircraft with uh, its thermal imaging cameras, we will be looking for uh, the Crew Dragon to come into view. And there you can see it in the entry of Earth's atmosphere, Crew Dragon continuing its journey home. So there's a material uh, on the bottom of the capsule. PICA 3.0 stands for uh, phenolic impregnated uh, carbon ablator. That is the material that is really shielding the capsule from all of that extreme temperature. And so the, the capsule itself goes in sort of bottom first and um, uh, that lightweight material uh, and that is uh, just a fantastic shot. That is the dragon re-entering the Earth's atmosphere as it uh, leaves that trail behind. Um, and then again that, that the illumination is from all of that heat um, that is building up uh, due to friction of just the reentry speeds of Dragon when it meets the Earth's atmosphere. And that view coming from the boat, Go Navigator, Crew Dragon continuing, as you said, into to enter Earth's atmosphere. So uh, having these two views right now, with it being a, a nighttime splashdown, pretty exciting that we're getting. Uh, two, two good views upon re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. So again, a lot of things are happening uh, pretty rapidly here. In about three minutes, the first set of parachutes will deploy. They are drogue chutes. They are conical in nature, and their job is to uh, stabilize and begin sort of the initial uh, deceleration of the vehicle, followed uh, very shortly after by the main parachutes. There are four of them. Dragon, SpaceX, com check. And SpaceX, this is Dragon, over 4 Gs, 42 kilometers. SpaceX, we have you loud and clear. Expect automated chute deployment. And resilience copies. We are at 4 kilometers, 4.34 on the G's. That's Commander Mike Hopkins reporting the G's that they experienced upon reentry. And as you heard, we are now out of that loss of signal portion, meaning the plasma has uh, eroded away enough from the spacecraft. My heart skipped a beat as soon as I heard um, <laughs> the too. crew. Uh, responding back and uh, you know one thing I did note as soon as Mike uh, turned on his comms there was a lot of 
background noise, and that is sort of, uh, you know, the the um, after effects of Dragon's re-entry. So this view again from the WB-57 aircraft. Dragon SpaceX, a GPS is converged. Expect nominal altitude for drogue shoot deploy. Resilience copies. Nominal altitude for drogue deploy. Crew Dragon Resilience now 30 kilometers over Earth. It's quite a quick drop over that uh, 100 that we saw just a few minutes ago. And now we'll be looking for drogue parachute deploy within the next minute or so at 11.52 p.m. Pacific time, 6.52 GMT. Those two drogue chutes should deploy at 18,000 feet in altitude. Crew Dragon will be moving approximately 350 miles per hour. Dragon SpaceX, recovery team reports visual. Good news, we're at 20 kilometers, seats are rotating. SpaceX copies on the seat rotation. And the seats are rotating into the proper landing position. We saw them a little bit more reclined earlier, facing the top of the capsule. And uh, now they are more forward facing towards that side hatch. We also got confirmation that the recovery teams can also now see Dragon coming back. Copy, braced for drogues. We are waiting for confirmation that the drogue chutes have deployed. We are expecting them to deploy uh, any minute now. And it looks like those might be our drogue chutes. Visual two chutes. SpaceX from Missouri, we show good drogues. SpaceX copies and concurs nominal descent right on two drogues. Uh, continuing to hear good news after good news. Uh, two drogue shoots have deployed. Everything looks nominal, and we're slowing the Dragon vehicle down. We are expecting the four main shoots to deploy uh, within the next minute. And those four drogue chutes. Oh, you can see them being pulled out now. Visual on four mains. And resilience copies, and we see a nominal descent rate. SpaceX copies and concur concurs nominal descent rate. And this view coming from the WB-57, very clear image of those four main parachutes slowing the vehicle down to what will be about 16 miles per hour prior to splashdown just off the coast of Panama City, Florida. If it were daylight, we would have an image of those four beautiful parachutes being orange and white and still getting these incredible views, even though we are in a nighttime splashdown. So we are waiting for uh, visuals of splashdown. The Dragon One program had great success with water landing with 20 successful splashdowns over the course of that program, nine of which were carried out by flight proven Dragon spacecrafts. And space height you broken, but we show you just under 800 meters, still good descent, right? Just under 800 meters from the Earth, that's about half of a mile. And we are tracking splashdown. And 600 meters, and we're showing 10 meters per second on the descent rate, a little higher than now. SpaceX copies.
And what a view we have here. Even though it's nighttime, uh, we have some great visuals uh, of Dragon there with his four main shoots deployed. Uh, slowly coming back to Earth. Splashdown is scheduled for just a few minutes from now. Meters. Now just a quarter of a mile away from Splashdown. And that Splashdown time is scheduled for 11.57 p.m. Pacific time. And SpaceX, we show nominal descent rates, 200 meters, brace for splashdown. SpaceX copies, brace for splashdown. Seconds away from splashdown, everything nominal aboard Crew Dragon Resilience returning to Earth. And there are the boats starting to chase after Dragon um, to begin their recovery operations as soon as Dragon lands. I don't know if you can hear the applause. But we have visual confirmation of the Crew-1 resilience capsule. Uh, this excellent news. We are splashed down. We sh the pyros have fired or water. SpaceX copies and concurs. We do she main cut as well. So again, you heard the applause. Uh, the crew one capsule has returned. Um, and we have successful splashdown. The main chutes have also cut as well. The fast boats are now making their way towards the capsule to begin the recovery operations. Again, that first boat is going to um, start to inspect the capsule and make sure that there isn't any residual uh, toxic fumes in the air. Dragon, on behalf of NASA and the SpaceX teams, we welcome you back to planet Earth and thanks for flying SpaceX. For those of you enrolled in our frequent flyer program, you have earned 68 million miles on this voyage. And SpaceX resilience, it is back on planet Earth. And we'll take those miles. Are they transferable? <laughs> and Dragon will have to refer you to our marketing department for that policy. And we are in one. That's three decimal one of 4.800. Uh, resilience, please uh, repeat last about 4.800. Okay, uh, we are at 3, and we show stable 1. SpaceX copies stable 1. Good news. So a bit of levity from the crew and the core uh, about the transferable, transferable uh, mileage. And that splashdown coming at 11.56 p.m. Pacific time, 6.56 GMT. We're hearing reports that the capsule is in stable one position, meaning it is upright. Uh, as we heard, those four main parachutes were cut, and those two fast boats will soon approach the vehicle. They will be able to, as we mentioned, sniff for those hypergol fuels, um, as well as attach buoys to the parachutes and make sure they are recovered. The teams have been ready and waiting about three nautical miles away, so it's going to take them around 20 minutes to make their way to Mike, Victor, Shannon, and Suichi inside Crew Dragon. And while the teams move in, we are uh, continuing to watch this scene unfold and this view coming from Go Navigator, the recovery vessel on which we will see Dragon hoisted later.
And that was uh, just so cool to see. We The teams had visual of Dragon with his shoots deployed, coming back down to Earth, and then you saw the fast boats sort of just as fast as they could, uh, you know, heading over to Dragon, uh, just to make sure that everything um, can uh, happen as quickly as possible and make sure that the astronauts are safe. And good news, the uh, recovery vehicle has a go to approach the spacecraft. Uh, Dragon SpaceX, we are go for recovery personnel to approach. Expect personnel alongside in about one minute. And SpaceX from Dragon, that is great news. And that comes right on time as well, just five minutes after splashdown. Those fast boats are going to be able to approach the capsule um, and put buoys on those parachutes. Uh, and the hypergol checks will continue. And eventually someone will help rig up the capsule to be picked up by the, uh, the go navigator once it has to go to approach the vehicle as well. And all of this action coming after undocking from the International Space Station at 5.35 p.m. Pacific time today, just six and a half hours from them to board the uh, Crew Dragon or to depart on Crew Dragon and splash down back on Earth after almost six months in space. And here's a aerial shot of those fast boats approaching Dragon SpaceX come check. And SpaceX from Resilience, we're still reading you loud and clear. Loud and clear as well. We just completed a minor comm configuration. Thanks. You bet. And we see some lights outside. Looks like some people are getting close. Affirmative. Uh, quite the welcome home party. So it looks like that first boat has already made it to the capsule. There are a number of other boats and recovery vessels um, standing by. And once we clear the area of, um, you know, from any hypergolic uh, vapors, um, they'll, you know, move on to the next phases of recovery. And some of those darker spaces you see there in the water are the parachutes that will be uh, collected later on. At this view, yes, from the WB-57 aircraft that provided us with those infrared images uh, as Dragon was still re-entering the Earth's atmosphere and then all the way through splashdown as well. So you can see that second boat approaching those uh, parachutes to attach some buoys. It really could not have been a more flawless journey home for Creed Dragon Resilience. Yeah, we, we continue to see, um, you know, nominal call after nominal call from the Dragon SpaceX. We show hypergol sweeps and unfired ordnance checks uh, nominal. Rigger should come aboard momentarily. Expect about two, five minutes until capsule lift. Stand by for PMC with SpaceX Flight Surgeon. Okay, resilience copies all. We're standing by. The core there just said um, we are clear of any hypergols uh, in the area, so we are starting to send the recovery vessel and we'll start to hoist up Dragon in about 25 minutes. And then shortly after that, he mentioned PMC, which is the private medical conference. Uh, again, the medical staff. Uh, or one of the first people to talk to the folks uh, inside the Dragon capsule. So, um, you know, uh, in about 30 minutes here, uh, we should be seeing the, um, uh, hopefully the astronauts egress from the side hatch of the Dragon capsule. We also heard them mention the rigor will be online or will be on the capsule shortly. That's the uh, one crew member we were discussing earlier, or one team member, I should say, that will climb on the capsule and begin rigging it for uh, for to be hoisted by the uh, Go Navigator vessel. It will help place 
crew dragon into the dragon nest aboard go navigator everything's still moving on timeline with this recovery tonight the first splashdown of a nasa uh, and spacex crew capsule and the first splashdown for nasa since 1968 with the return of the apollo 8 astronauts and one thing to note you can see the sheen uh, of the ocean uh, with those lights there and the sea itself uh, you know that could have been mistaken for a beach but we are in the middle of the ocean and the seas are just as calm as they can be again weather was something we were tracking and we waved off um, splashed down a couple times uh, this past week but today's conditions seemed absolutely serene there it is um, uh, for landing and you know recovery operations so it's just a great thing to see uh, that you know they don't have to combat any type of inclement weather while they're already doing such important work here in the Gulf of Mexico. So you can see some of those recovery vessels surrounding the capsule. And the crew members on board still just monitoring the status of the recovery. And as Andy mentioned, uh, will participate in a private medical conference to report back on how they are feeling and once they are brought on board, they'll have an opportunity to be checked out by medical personnel as well. Seeing some activity of that, that fast boat around Crew Dragon, and uh, that's what's in the middle of the screen right now. Uh, there is a much larger recovery vessel uh, nearby that will, that will hoist up Dragon onto uh, the back end of the ship. We're expecting that to happen uh, in approximately 25 minutes. And I can't tell exactly, but we may already have that person on Crew Dragon uh, beginning to rig it in preparation for when Go Navigator can approach and um, it be attached to to the ship and, and brought on board. So this was the primary site that we landed on uh, off the coast of Panama City in Florida. We did have an alternate site off the coast of Tampa. Um, there was an equivalent amount of um, personnel and uh, hardware and ships ready to uh, perform the same type of recovery operations in the event that Dragon had to uh, choose that site over the primary one. But things continuing to go smooth. And we did get a report that the crew is feeling well inside the capsule, just what we wanted to hear. Of course, they will still have that private medical conference and they will still receive medical checkouts once they arrive on Go Navigator. But um, amazing preliminary news uh, that the crew reports that they are feeling well. And, and that's quite a feat in itself to be feeling well after six months in microgravity uh, and to return to gravity. So uh, great news all around tonight with the return of Crew Dragon Resilience.
coming up on just about 15 minutes since we had splashdown today. This evening, that splashdown coming at 6 or 11.56 p.m. Pacific Time, 6.56 GMT. And now you can, a little more clearly on the right-hand side of the capsule, see the person who is preparing it for their, uh, to be picked up by Go Navigator with that rigging system. And that's right on time as well. And so this is the uh, resilience capsule. It flew for the first time uh, in November of last year. And when it flew, uh, it was pristine and white. And now we've got uh, a little bit of uh, toastiness on its side. And, and some people have uh, described the re-entered capsule as a sort of a toasted marshmallow. And again, that is uh, just from all the heat uh, on re-entry. Um, it is continuing to stay buoyant in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, the Dragon vehicle itself is designed to be waterproof. Um, and in the event, event that there is a breach, we do have some uh, abilities to pump water into some bladders in the capsule to make sure that it stays buoyant for as long as possible. But uh, everything continues to go well. We are now seeing a uh, even better view of the rigger uh, on top of the Dragon capsule, prepare, preparing it for hoisting later on uh, in a few minutes here. And that's a great picture. You can see just how calm the the sea really is. That is the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty amazing that, that it's that truly glassy, as we heard described earlier. A great view of the capsule now and the person preparing it to be hoisted on to go navigator. And as a reminder, we're going to remain live with you throughout this coverage uh, up until the crew has been extracted from the vehicle. And this view, another view from Go Navigator. You can see uh, the nest right there. That's where Crew Dragon will be placed once it has been hoisted onto the vessel. We have some people stepping in on the nest and you can just see sort of the scale uh, of that nest and really the boat. Um, the Dragon capsule is, um, you know, we, we throughout today we've seen it from a distance. Brazilian SpaceX recovery is proceeding nominally at this time. The recovery vessel uh, is backing up towards uh, the spacecraft and uh, proceeding nominally. See Crew Dragon Resilience within the frame of uh, that hoist mechanism on Go Navigator. The report going out to the crew that things continue to proceed nominally, and we can see that for ourselves as well. Uh, the, the the space the uh, Go Navigator will continue backing up to Crew Dragon until it's close enough to attach those lines and hoist. The spacecraft onto the nest there at the bottom of your screen. As we were saying earlier, the um, the scale really doesn't really put into perspective until you you know start to put people around. Um, the capsule itself is you know over twenty thousand pounds, and so uh, and the Dragon SpaceX uh, repeat call. We have a we are proceeding nominally. Looks like the recovery vessel is about one boat length away, backing up towards the spacecraft. That is great news, SpaceX. Looking forward to it.
continuing to proceed nominally. Go Navigator is backing up towards the resilience capsule as the uh, team of recovery personnel continue to um, get Dragon on top of the nest there that you see on screen. And once Crew Dragon is lifted onto the nest, uh, it will shortly afterward be pulled toward the egress platform or the platform that allows them to exit. And that uh, platform is built up towards near the uh, that forward hatch, and it should allow them to more easily exit the vehicle. Now been 20 minutes since tonight's splashdown. 6.56 GMT, 11.56 PM Pacific time. Mike Hopkins, Victor Glover, Shannon Walker, and Soichi Noguchi, all inside Crew Dragon, and uh, recovery operations proceed nominally. So we are now waiting excitedly uh, for the recovery of our Dragon spacecraft with NASA astronauts Mike Hopkins, Victor Glover, Shannon Walker, and JAXA astronaut Soichi Noguchi inside. Dragon has already uh, autonomously completed several steps to save itself uh, following splashdown. Uh, for, the, for those of you just joining us, the mission has gone smoothly so far. Dragon uh, successfully splashed down in the Gulf of Mexico off the coast of Panama City, Florida at approximately 11.56 uh, a.m. or p.m. Pacific time. Approximately. Uh, Dragon SpaceX rigging is complete approximately five minutes until capsule lift. Resilience copies, five minutes to lift. And that's good news. They will continue to get closer to the spacecraft uh, with rigging complete, meaning it will be able to be hoisted in five minutes from now. But approximately six and a half hours ago, uh, Dragon autonomously undocked from the International Space Station, completed a series of departure burns, jettisoned its trunk section, and performed its final burn, the deorbit burn, to place itself on a trajectory toward the Gulf of Mexico. Dragon successfully re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, followed by deployment of its parachutes to slow the spacecraft down to a gentle splashdown at just about 16 miles per hour. And we're now following the final part of Mike, Victor, Shannon, and Suichi's journey as Dragon is lifted out of the water and placed on the recovery boat. Upon detection of landing, Dragon automatically releases the main parachutes to prevent wind from pulling the spacecraft. Dragon then automatically safes any pyrotechnics still present on the vehicle and may automatically perform additional minor system reconfigurations. The astronauts uh, do remain seated and in their suits uh, at this point, but the onboard air conditioning keeps temperatures in check inside of the spacecraft and the communication systems on board remain powered so the crew can continue to communicate with ground. SpaceX has two fast boats in the recovery fleet, which moved quickly to the splashdown point. And they um, have been joined by Go Navigator, which is the main recovery vessel in your screen now. And that has moved into position near the spacecraft. Those two fast boats have very specific roles. On first approach, it's immediately focused on safety inspection of the capsule integrity and checking for any presence of those hypergolic propellant vapors we've been talking about, ensuring that it is safe for Go Navigator to approach the Dragon spacecraft. Once the capsule is cleared for full approach, the team begins rigging the capsule for water recovery by the recovery ship, which we recently heard was completed. And the second fast boat is responsible for parachute recovery and also serves as a redundant boat to the first. And we saw that team member uh, or on a jet ski helping to gather up the detached parachutes as well. So it took about 10 minutes for the recovery crew to complete their safety checks. Um, uh, once complete, the team will uh, begin uh, preparing Dragon to be lifted into the recovery vessel. And as part of this preparation, one member of the recovery team uh, will climb up on top of the capsule and rig the uh, Dragon spacecraft, uh, as they just did a few moments ago. And then from there, it will take less than an hour to raise Dragon to the recovery uh, boat and remove the crew from the spacecraft. 
Um, and then after that, me after medical checkouts, the crew will return to land within four hours, either by boat or helicopter, depending on the landing site. So um, if no medical assistance is needed, the crew will depart for Houston. And if you look very closely, you can see uh, down to the bottom right of the capsule, there is one attachment on Crew Dragon. There will be multiple to keep the, and there's another on the left, uh, there will be multiple to keep the, the spacecraft from swinging when it, once it is hoisted out of the water. And it'll very, very quickly be placed on that dragon nest waiting just below and at the bottom center of your screen. And as you can see, Crew Dragon now at multiple attachment points uh, to that system on Go Navigator. Dragon SpaceX, expect lift in nine zero seconds. Copy, ninety seconds. Thanks, so. So about a minute and a half until we see Crew Dragon removed from the water. And there's still a team member up on the front of it. That's likely the same team member who helped rig the system and prepare it for attachment to uh, the vessel. And as we mentioned earlier, this splashed down a new record breaking the old record for the longest uh, crewed capsule in orbit from America, previously held by the final Skylab crew at 84 days, one hour and 15 minutes. And uh, this crew returning with 168 days in space and doubling that previous record. Dragon SpaceX, brace for capsule lift. Go ahead, Sol. We hear the lift. Dragon Resilience now out of the water and pre being prepared to be placed on that dragon nest in the center of your screen at the bottom. And just an hour ago, this capsule had just completed the deorbit burn and was still in space and now is being returned to go navigator the first time for these crew members to be on Earth in almost six months. Pretty much on uh, the center of the screen, you can see the side hatch of the Dragon capsule. Uh, later on today, that's where the astronauts will be egressing from. When they were attached to the International Space Station, they exited from the top hatch where the nose cone opens up. And those two holes, essentially, that you see up toward the top of the nose cone above the... Resilience, welcome aboard the recovery vessel. Recovery personnel are completing final checks. Stand by for translation of the egress platform in a couple minutes. Resilience copies. 
those those two holes aboard the uh, aboard the crew dragon above the hatch and close to the nose cone. Those are uh, where the drug parachutes were stored in that upper bulkhead. And there's near a deployable panel. So they're deployed by two drogue mortars, which are pyrotechnics fired to deploy the chutes. And those four main parachutes are also stored under deployable panels, but those are near the base of the spacecraft. So below that side hatch panel, um, and those were drawn out by the drogue chutes. Everything just absolutely flawless tonight um, with the recovery of Crew Dragon resilience. So before opening the hatch, the spacecraft's cabin pressure must be equalized with the outside environment. So once the hatch is open, that will be Mike, Victor, Shannon, and Soichi's first breath of fresh air since boarding Falcon 9 at the start of their mission back in November of last year. And the next visual we are looking for is for Dragon to be pulled toward the egress platform uh, on the Dragon Nest. So they will move toward the platform that uh, is up toward the side hatch. That'll allow for easier extraction, removal of the crew members. It's important to note that Mike, Victor, Shannon, and Suichi will be getting assistance from the recovery teams while exiting the capsule. And this is the same process for any returning long duration crew members as returning to a gravity environment can uh, essentially wreak havoc with our vestibular system, which is responsible for maintaining our balance and motion. And safety is our number one priority with this operation, as you've seen throughout, not just today, but this entire mission. So you'll see all uh, Mike, Victor, Shannon, and Suichi helped out of the capsule. Um, we, we won't see them outside of the capsule today, uh, but they will be assisted a few feet to the medical quarters aboard the boat. And we discussed earlier, if you've seen crews return on a Soyuz, it's the same process as when astronauts are carried from the capsule to waiting chairs and then carried into the nearby medical tent. This is also the period where any time critical cargo can be removed from the spacecraft, with the remainder waiting until the ship is back in port. But once the ship and capsule return, the recovery team will perform additional inspections before loading Dragon onto a flatbed, flatbed truck at the SpaceX facility in Cape Canaveral for post-processing. So the uh, crew just secured Dragon uh, onto the recovery vessel, and now it's moving uh, towards the platform where eventually the hatch will open up. Got more personnel assisting with the recovery operations. And that platform coming right below the side hatch, making it much easier for teams to help the crew egress or exit the vehicle. And this is the first time that this side hatch will be opened since launch day, November 15th. Uh, the, the hatch that's used on the International Space Station is that forward hatch underneath the nose cone, which is currently closed at the top of the vehicle. So uh, as soon as this was sealed by SpaceX teams back in November, it has not been reopened since. And uh, we see teams still preparing the capsule for that hatch opening. So it'll still be a few minutes before uh, we have hatch opening. Again, we need to make sure that the cabin pressure is equalized to um, the ambient pressure outside. Uh, the team also performs a, a few checks to make sure that everything is a go before we um, open up that side hatch. It's been about 35 minutes since crew one splashed down. So you can see just how expedient this process already is. Uh, having the capsule on board and, and preparing to open up that side hatch. And 
and all of the parachutes, both the drogues and the main chutes, have been located and those will be recovered. SpaceX resumes. Go for SpaceX. Hey, Solo, you guys are welcome to come on board with the cameras if you'd like. SpaceX copies and work. And Solo, you got uh, one more call before we wrap things up, is that correct? Affirmative. We have a few uh, technicians just uh, doing some work on the exterior of the hatch. We should be uh, ready to open up shortly, we hope. Copy. Now the crew members will not ride this boat all the way back to shore. They will board a helicopter, and that helicopter will take them um, back to Pensacola. And waiting there will be a NASA plane to bring them back to Houston. Yeah, it's quite surreal uh, that about seven hours ago, this capsule uh, was traveling at over... And a Dragon, stand by for side hatch opening and egress. Okay, Solo, we are standing by. Okay, and uh, while I'm thinking about it, uh, Solo for SpaceX and the NASA teams, on behalf of uh, Crew-1 and, and our families, uh, we just want to say thank you. We want to say thank you for this amazing vehicle resilience. Uh, my, we said it before the, the mission, and, and I'm going to say it again here afterwards. It's amazing what can be accomplished when uh, when people come together. Um, so finally, I'd just like to say, quite frankly, uh, you all are changing the world. Congratulations. It's great to be back. And Hopper, thanks so much. You've got a round of applause here in Mission Control. And uh, from all of us, it's truly been epic working with your team uh, from early development through splashdown uh, of the world's first long duration space flight, uh, human space flight. Uh, your crew is really a tribute to resilience's name. Uh, we wish you all happy reunions with your families and loved ones. And thanks again for flying SpaceX. Thank you, Solo. Thank you all. So we had some kind words exchanged um, from the core and Mike Hopkins, Mike Hopkins, the commander. The hatch is now open. Uh, we also heard some applause and mission control here in uh, SpaceX. Just a tremendous amount of dedication that has gone into this uh, particular mission over the last couple of years. And so uh, we're really seeing the fruits of the labor now, uh, really ending the mission. And, uh, you know, just seven hours ago, this, this capsule was traveling over 17,000 miles an hour in space, docked to the International Space Station. And now it's safely secured um, back on Earth, and we have the hatch open. Um, and that hatch open for the first time, as we mentioned, since launch day, November 15th, 2020. These astronauts completing the first long-duration commercial crew mission and now holding the record for the longest uh, time in space by an American crewed capsule with returning with 168 days. And with that side hatch being open, as we discussed, the first people to speak with uh, Mike, Victor, Shannon, and Soichi are the medical team. And as we heard earlier, the crew did report that they were feeling well, uh, but still important to get checked out after spending six months in space. They will eventually be removed from the capsule and put on stretchers to take and take into uh, some additional medical checks. We're coming up on 40, four zero minutes since splashdown. 
That capsule splashing down at 6.56 GMT, 11.56 PM Pacific time. Returning crew one aboard Crew Dragon Resilience. That side hatch now open. Crew members speaking with medical personnel and uh, preparing for egress. Everything was on the timeline for Crew Dragon today, undocking at 5.35 p.m. Pacific time, completing those four departure burns, as well as a nose cone or as claw separation and, and trunk jettison. We had some amazing views from the International Space Station along the way. That deorbit burn lasting the scheduled 16 and a half minutes slowing down Crew Dragon just enough to drop them out of Earth's orbit, begin their re-entry into the atmosphere. We saw both Drogue parachutes deploy nominally, followed by four good main parachutes and a soft splashdown as scheduled in the Gulf of Mexico off the coast of Panama City, Florida at 11.56 p.m. Pacific time, 6.56 GMT. And after splashdown, we uh, saw the two fast boats approaching the vehicle. Uh, the first one uh, made sure the area was safe for approach, and then uh, one of the riggers climbed on top of the capsule and started preparing it for um, the eventual hoist and lift onto uh, the boat that is on screen right now, Go Navigator. Um, really, the, as soon as we got visuals of Dragon, those boats uh, really headed over there as fast as they could and tried to expedite the process. And now we're here, the, the capsule is on the boat, it's secured, uh, our hatch is open, and we have some personnel tending to the astronauts right now and make sure everything is A-OK -okay after what really has been a picture-perfect mission uh, so far. The crew remains on the timeline to egress or exit Dragon uh, in under an hour after splashdown. So they still have, um, about 20 minutes until we reach, or 18 minutes until we reach that hour mark, and we are perfectly on schedule for the hatch to have been opened at its time. And we just saw one of those uh, tablets being removed that the crew members were using to track the mission throughout the day. Just as it takes a little while to get crew members strapped in properly, from, uh, well, preparing for launch, we, we see the same thing whenever they come home. We want to make sure that everything is done in an orderly fashion and uh, safely for our four astronauts. Seems like we're removing a few parts to make room for the astronauts to egress. And that looked like those um, foot footrests, essentially. I, I'm not sure the, the best thing to call them. I can't think of it right now. <laughs>
You can see those two windows on either side of the hatch. That's what uh, gave the astronauts a view. Earlier they said they had a great view of the International Space Station. And even upon launch day, they gave us some views as they were uh, heading to the space station. So those are their, their two windows that they've been able to look at, uh, look out during their journey aboard this spacecraft. For those just joining us um, on screen right now is the Crew-1 capsule resilience uh, has returned from space. Um, we are on sort of the, the back end of the recovery vessel, uh, Go Navigator, and here is, uh, I think that's Mike Hopkins, the commander. Uh, he's, he's very excited. <laughs> Feeling pretty good after six months in space. <laughs> Uh, this is just excellent to see uh, the astronauts um, coming out of the Dragon vehicle. So we're just off the coast of Panama City, Florida, and the hatch has been opened. There was some materials that were removed. It looked like the seat rests were removed, or the, um, the foot rests were removed. And now we just saw um, the commander, Mike Hopkins, uh, exit the vehicle, do a little bit of a dance. As we mentioned, these crew will be uh, crew members will be making their way over to some medical checks. Uh, standard procedure for us when we have crew members returning from long duration space flight or any space flight really, uh, when we are having crew members return on a Soyuz spacecraft in Kazakhstan, there is a medical tent nearby and we carry those crew members from the spacecraft to the medical tent for their checkouts. So even though the crew has reported they're feeling good and it certainly looked like Mike Hopkins was feeling good, uh, they will still get those standard medical checks before boarding a uh, helicopter later this evening to uh, take them back to shore. And once they are on land in Florida, they will board a NASA plane to bring them back to Ellington Field in Houston, Texas, where they can be reunited with friends and family for the first time in almost six months. Yeah, and the uh, bottom left of your, of your screen, there is a stretcher there. Um, again, that is standard. Uh, returning back to Earth after such a long duration in microgravity has um, it can do things to your body, um, so those two SpaceX team members preparing to help out the next crew member, and that is uh, NASA astronaut Victor Glover. And this is a view of Mission Control in Hawthorne. Continuing to support the mission. Um, yeah, we just saw Mike Hopkins exit the uh, vehicle. Again, uh, things are going pretty nominally. Uh, the uh, crew, uh, the vehicle had a splashdown at approximately 11:56 p.m. Pacific time, and uh, shortly after that, the recovery team began their operations. We sent fast boats out there to start to sniff out the hypergalls and make sure there was any toxic vapors in the air began rigging the boat and eventually uh, getting the Dragon uh, capsule on top of the Go Navigator uh, recovery vessel. And we saw uh, Mike Hopkins 
out of the spacecraft first. He did a little dance for us to show us just how good he felt. Uh, and then followed by Victor Glover. Victor Glover returning from his first space flight. He was really the newbie on this trip, I guess you could say. Uh, he served as pilot of Crew-1, Crew Dragon Resilience. So he was the next out of the capsule. And uh, we are still awaiting two more crew members to be removed from the capsule. And they will be uh, checked out by those medical teams on board the ship. But as we heard earlier, they reported that they were feeling well. Yeah, the two mission specialists that we uh, haven't seen yet are um, Shannon Walker and Soichi Noguchi, uh, who sat uh, sort of on the ends of the uh, seats inside the vehicle. Um, yeah, pretty uh, stellar return home today, only taking about six and a half hours from undocking to uh, splashdown. And, um, you know, throughout the uh, mission today, we had uh, really great feedback about some nominal departure burns. Uh, we did a prop wasting burn where we shed some unnecessary uh, propellant from the vehicle to lighten the load of the Dragon spacecraft. And then we started to prepare for deorbit. So we had the um, uh, claw uh, retraction or, or um, uh, separation. Uh, that is an umbilical that uh, ties telemetry, data, and power from the capsule to the trunk. So we separated that. Then we also jettisoned the trunk, shedding a bit more weight. And then finally, we had our deorbit burn, which uh, took about 16 minutes. Um, and then uh, we got some fantastic footage um, of a dragon returning back through the atmosphere. And then eventually, when it deployed its chutes, it was definitely a sight to see. And we uh, saw all of those chutes deploy nominally, first two drogue chutes that slowed the spacecraft down to about 119 miles per hour, those four main chutes following and slowing the spacecraft down to about uh, 16 miles per hour for a much softer splashdown. And uh, that splashdown coming right on time at 11.56 p.m. Pacific time, 6.56 GMT. So uh, we have heard that Shannon Walker is now outside of the Crew Dragon Resilience capsule, leaving Soichi Noguchi to be the last crew member extracted today and as we mentioned they will all get uh, medical checkouts ahead of uh, heading back to land and so quite a uh, speedy operations to you know um, get the capsule back onto the boat and open up the hatch um, so again we uh, uh, Mike Victor and Shannon uh, have exited the vehicle and we are waiting on Soichi a confirmation that Suichi is um, also going to exit. And again, they uh, ex are, you know, going to be checked out to make sure everything's okay, and then eventually make their way back towards Houston, uh, where hopefully they can re reunite with their family soon. And we expect them to be back in Houston by the early hours of tomorrow morning, hopefully. Uh, let's see here. They should return to Houston. I can't find the exact timeline just at this moment, but uh, they will board a NASA jet once they return to land in Florida. Um, that helicopter taking them from Go Navigator to Florida and then the NASA plane taking them back to Ellington Field. So it's, it's quite a speedy recovery process. Uh, you know, when we land crew members in Kazakhstan, um, we are able to get them out of the vehicle very quickly as well because it is on land. So it's easier to approach and uh, to maneuver around. They get medical checks as well, and uh, and then they board a NASA plane and, and or the NASA astronauts, I should say, board a NASA plane and return to Houston. But that flight time is, is just so much longer simply because it's on the other side of the world. So quite different for these astronauts to be reunited with their families um, just very shortly after landing. Yeah, and uh, one thing that certainly helped the um, speedy recovery options today was the weather. Uh, we got... Um, you know, uh, good news that wind speed was super low and the waves um, themselves were also very, very small. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you've been following along, the original uh, departure date was supposed to be on the 28th, but we waived uh, that due to weather. And then we also waived the attempt on the 30th. But today, conditions definitely seem ideal. And, uh, you know, it, it definitely paid uh, today as you know, after the a capsule had landed. Uh, the seas were as calm as I've ever seen them, uh, making the trip for the fast boats to the capsule that much smoother. 
And And good news, uh, Soichi Noguchi has egressed the vehicle as well. So now that Mike, Victor, Shannon, and Soichi are safely back home on Earth and getting checked out by the NASA medical team, we are going to wrap up our live coverage of their historic return. This all kicked off on November 15, 2020, from historic launch pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. After a successful liftoff and separation from Falcon 9, Mike, Victor, Shannon, and Soichi made a 27-hour flight on board Dragon to the International Space Station. Since arriving at the space station, they spent more they spent more than nearly they spent almost 6 months as members of Expedition 6465 executing science experiments, spacewalks, and repairs while aboard the orbiting laboratory. Their journey home today began just hours ago, uh, Saturday, May 1st, when they closed the hatch to Dragon and undocked hours later at 5.35 p.m. Pacific time. We then jettisoned Dr Dragon's trunk and performed our final on-orbit maneuver, the deorbit burn, at approximately 11.03 p.m. Pacific time to send Dragon on the path home. The spacecraft re-entered re the Earth's atmosphere and slowed its descent with successful deployments of the two drogue shoot uh, drogue parachutes and four main chutes uh, with the final splashdown occurring at, off the coast of Panama City, Florida at 11.57 p.m. Pacific time. Following that successful splashdown, we saw SpaceX recovery experts move in and prepare Dragon Resilience for its lift onto the recovery vessel. And just a little less than an hour following splashdown, we saw Mike, uh, Vic, uh, Victor, Shannon, and Soichi, um, you know, safely uh, exit the uh, Dragon capsule. Next up, they will catch a helicopter flight back to shore where they will transfer to the waiting NASA plane for the short flight back to Houston where they will be reunited with families to bring an end to this flight. We can't express what an honor and a privilege it has been to share their journey with all of you as we continue this new era in human spaceflight. In just the last week, we saw four astronauts fly to station to begin their mission and now four more return to Earth to successfully complete another. So SpaceX and NASA are already looking forward to the next rotation when Crew-2 comes home and Crew-3 launches, all of which is currently targeted for October of this year. And at that time, we'll once again have a direct handover with 11 people on board the station for a short duration as we continue this regular cadence of flying astronauts on SpaceX rockets from Pad 39A to Kennedy Space Center. Uh, again, thank you for tuning in for the culmination of Crew-1, a six-month mission that has been years in the making. Uh, all of us here at SpaceX and NASA are excited to reunite these four astronauts with their families. Uh, we'll continue to work hard uh, to ensure future astronaut safety and mission uh, success. So be sure to follow SpaceX and NASA online, uh, as well as the social media for updates on crew and cargo flights to and from the International Space Station. And we'll continue to share the progress of Mike, Victor, Shannon, and Suichi's trip back to Houston on social media. We are also awaiting a briefing, including NASA, SpaceX, and JAXA leadership. That's coming up at 2 a.m. Pacific time, 5 a.m. Eastern time. So we have to say thank you one more time again for tuning in and cheering on Mike, Victor, Shannon, and Suichi as they return home. And we'll see you next time when we once again are sending astronauts on American rockets and American spacecraft from American soil. See you next time.